Hey everyone, Guardian E here with a beginner's guide video for Azure Lane. To you veterans out there, a lot of this is going to seem super obvious, so I apologize in advance, but I'm hoping that maybe it's still useful, even if from just a proof of concept perspective. So one of the most common questions I get in the variety of summon and pull videos is, how on earth do you have so many cubes? Just how much of a whale are you? And the answer is patience and saving. Now, I'll preface this by saying I'm not free to play. I've purchased gems on numerous occasions to spend on dock space, on skins, on rings for my favorites. I love the game. The developers do an amazing job and I have no problem spending to support them. And I encourage anyone else with the appropriate disposable income to do so as well. That said, I've never had a reason to spend gems on cubes. And I've had cube totals upwards of 600 to 700 going in on a banner before, just from saving, hoarding, and following some very, very simple guidelines. Now, this certainly isn't meant to be a flex. There are people out there with way, way higher cube counts than me that probably follow very similar guidelines. And I'm just trying to share those best practices to make sure everybody knows that if their goal really is to make sure they have the highest and best chance of getting all of the ships that they want from a banner. As a proof of concept, I've recorded every single free cube I've earned over the course of the past month with an accompanying cube count total. And you'll see the cube count climb as I simply follow these rules throughout the course of August. Now, a few things worth noting before we begin, there is a bit of RNG involved. Random number generators, specifically with shop contents and commissions. Those are randomized on a daily and reset basis. But on average, your cube gain should be comparable to what's shown here. For the sake of expediency, I did not show every single time I checked the shop, nor did I show every single time we failed on the commissions to get cubes, just because we thought that would be a little bit unnecessary. Next, this does not include any cubes gained through event exchanges, quests, or mails, like maintenance mails. August was a ripe month in particular because it was the anniversary, and the cubes shown here do not include those bonus cubes. And finally, remember that it only takes one bad banner to completely tank your cube count. People spend upwards of 600 cubes without getting their desired ship, so that's why it's always a good idea to save, hedge your bets, and make sure you have as many cubes as possible to give you the greatest possible chance of getting your targets. Alright, so you ready? Here it is. Number one, log in every day. Pretty simple, right? Pretty self-explanatory. You get login bonuses over the course of the month, every single day, including cubes. So you don't want to miss those. You want to make sure that you log in every day. And along those lines, you want to do your daily missions every day for cubes. All you need are three A-rank victories. And since you should be doing your daily trainings anyway, every single day to maximize coin gain, that's going to satisfy those requirements. So easy peasy. Number two, restrict your cube spending to one per day outside of limited event banners, light construction only. This will complete a daily mission. You spend a cube, you gain a cube. It's more or less one free summon per day. Then on Sunday, do three more constructions to round out the weekly mission that will give you six cubes. Number three, rotate your commissions at least twice per day. Usually I'll clear them early in the morning, always prioritizing the ones that have a cube chance and making sure to do the 10 hour commission and then checking on them once or twice more throughout the day. The more you clear your commissions, the more commissions you get overall, the more chances at getting cube commissions. Obviously, there's only a chance at getting cubes from these, but if you get enough of them, you will get cubes and it will impact your cube total. The 10 hour cube commission actually does guarantee at least five cubes to a maximum of seven. Number four, always check both the general and merit shops for cubes at least twice a day. It's not common, but you'll see cubes for sale every now and again for coins or merits. Now, I'm not talking about buying them for gems. Be careful, because they'll sometimes appear on sale for gems. Don't buy these. But the shops do reset twice per day, so make sure to just check them twice per day to see if they have any cubes for sale. Number five, when a brand new shiny limited event banner appears, the most efficient way to spend cubes is to stick to your daily constructions. Usually with an event, you'll gain some kind of event currency through a mission by doing three constructions per day. Do those three, don't use your quick finishers, and just let it ride. If the end of the banner approaches and you still don't have your desired ships, you can start going in harder. Number six, when you get all of your event ships that you wanted, don't keep spending for limit break copies. 
That's what your Bulins and your Purins are for. If you got lucky on one banner, that doesn't mean you'll get lucky on the next one, so just save your cubes for the next banner. Number seven, don't spend cubes on research projects. It's just not worth it. There are going to be plenty of free basic research projects or even ones that simply involve grinding or gold. And don't forget that you can refresh the projects once per day. Now, obviously there's some leeway here based on your priorities because this is really more of a do what I say, not what I do guideline since I always front load my spending on day one of a banner. What can I say? I make summon videos. And further, if you want to make sure you have enough time to max out all the ships for that limited event chat portrait, that pretty little shiny border around your portrait, you may want to prioritize spending earlier rather than the final days of a banner. Now, when first starting out, I understand wanting to go in hard on heavy or special construction to try to get that enterprise or that hood. But the reality is, is that those ships are in the normal construction pool, and they're going to show up in your limited event pools eventually, whether you want them to or not. And further, when you're first starting out, you don't need a hard carry like Enterprise. You can make do with some of the elite battlecruisers or more common big sevens like Rodney and Nelson to start off with. Not only this, Enterprise, Hood, and the others will show up in the metal exchange shop randomly, and you can secure them for free that way with just a little patience. Now, there are just a few notable exceptions to this, uh, one of them being the Z-Force event ships, Otago and Prince of Wales, those two ships are not available in the light construction pool and are also not available in limited construction pools. So if you want either of those ships, you'll have to end up spending some in heavy and special construction. Other additions to the regular pool, like Centaur, for example, or a lot of the submarines that they ended up adding, those are also not going to be pullable from the limited event pool. So if any of those are your targets, I understand going in a bit on the other two normal banners. But honestly, that's really it. I told you it was simple, but a lot of people seem to not believe me when I tell them that the game is really generous with the cubes, and you can really stockpile them just by following some very simple saving guidelines. And as you can see here, throughout the month of August, I got a pretty hefty number of cubes just by following these steps. Now on average, a limited event banner will cost around 100 to 150 cubes to get all of the event ships, right? Limited event SRs typically have a 2% rate in this game. 2% meaning that you'll, on average, get one copy in 50 pulls. Limited event banners are two cubes per pull, so you're talking about 100 to 150 cubes on average. Now, obviously, it can swing wildly both ways. You can get them in your first pull, your first multi, or again, it could take you 600 cubes. But on average, that's what it takes. And if you end up getting the average again and again, you'll end up net positive, and your cube count will only grow as the banners come and go. Now, spoilers ahead, the monthly cube count ends up being over 250 cubes this month. 250 cubes. If we decide to factor in the light constructions necessary to complete all of the daily and weekly quests, that'd be about 40 cubes, give or take, 10 cubes per week. So if you subtract that from the total, that's still a net positive of over 200 cubes this month, which is well over the average number of cubes needed to get all of the ships from a limited event banner. Now, a lot of people out there are probably going to suggest, I get all of the event ships in 20 cubes, lol, XD, I never need to save. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> I hope you never will. This game is super generous, not only with the cubes, but with the rates. 7% SR rate with a 2% rate up per SR event ship. Those are very high rates. But you play enough gacha games, and you come to realize that luck doesn't last forever, so you always want to be prepared since there are no guarantees. Now, more recently, we've been hit by a lot of desirable banners, one right after the other, so I can understand taking a hit to your cube count, but that's why you try to accumulate something like 500 to 600 cubes, because you never know. You also want to be wary and stray away from those, well, most of those anyway, limited time rate up events, where the ships are just going into the regular pool anyway, they're not actually limited ships, you just have a limited rate up. So hopefully this was interesting or useful. <laughs> if it was, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more Azure Lane content. We thank you all for sticking around, watching the video, and until next time, let's protect those waters. Stay stand up.